Hello, my name is David Mitre Becerril, and today I am going to present a research project that I have been conducting with John McDonald about the effects of zoning regulations on crime, where we use Philadelphia as a case study. But first, let me give you some historical facts. At the beginning of the last century, the US saw the enactment of the first local zoning law meant to organize the construction and development of residential commercial and industrial projects. Years later, specifically after World War II, many local governments implemented laws to fulfill their comprehensive plan and benefit the collective interest. In the 1960s, Jane Jacobs, an expert in urban studies, argues that bringing together residential and commercial uses will be a natural deterrent to crime. Her idea led to a new line of research that assessed the role of law of land use changes and crime. Pretty much all of these studies done in the following five decades were correlational and descriptive only. It was until the last decade that the scholars began conducting causal research studies in this topic such as ours. Our research aims to answer what are the causal effects of urban development on crime, where we measure urban development through land use, zoning, and construction, and construction changes. Answering this question is challenging because estimating causal evidence is difficult in social sciences. Also, theory cannot provide a definite answer because on the one hand, Restrictions on urban development projects hinder neighborhood revitalization, increasing crime. On the other hand, more economic development leads to more eyes upon the street, reducing crime. But to the extent that residents are displaced, it weakens informal social control mechanisms, increasing crime. Therefore, the net effect on public safety is uncertain. We use a recent policy change in Philadelphia to answer our research question. Specifically, Philadelphia replaced a 50-year-old zoning code in 2011. The city updated the zoning areas, simplified approving construction projects, and changed several construction restrictions. However, it did not modify the council prerogative, which refers to the influence that council members have over urban development projects in their jurisdictions. For instance, a study found that in the last decade, nearly 99% of local ordinances concerning land use regulations within a single council district were approved unanimously. As anecdotal evidence suggests, you will find it easier to build in Philadelphia if you get along with your council member. In our research, we used the political contributions to identify the council member's preference over land use changes. First, we estimated the relative, the relative contribution made by the top 10% of donors. Then, we identified the donors that work in the construction and real estate industries. This process reveals a clear pattern. For instance, we found that the top 10% of donors in council district number six contributed to 56% of all donations. And nearly 49% came from urban development donors which is very similar to what happened in other council districts. In contrast, the top 10% of donors in council district number eight contributed 67%, but real estate donors only provided 8% of the total contributions. In short, the figure shows that council districts four, seven, eight, and nine have a very small influence of urban development donors. Now, using these differential propensities towards urban development, we compare neighborhoods that are a half a mile apart, which are very similar in sociodemographics, except that some are located in council districts that are more inclined to approve 
urban development projects than their contiguous jurisdictions. Now, moving on to the results, we found that the new zoning code led to a reduction in urban development projects in council districts less inclined to zoning changes than their neighboring jurisdiction and pre-policy periods. Specifically, the new zoning ordinance decreased between 35 to 46% the zoning and construction permits per 100 parcels. Now, knowing that there was a, a negative impact on local economic development due to the new zoning code, what was it, its effect on public safety? Here, we found no changes in property crime which includes financially motivated crimes such as burglary, larceny, and motor vehicle theft. Similarly, we did not find any effects on violent criminal offenses such as robbery, murder, rape, and assault. Finally, we said, I said if there were any differential crime effects based on the characteristics of the neighborhood. We measure how walkable the neck communities, the communities are, calculated through the number of residents, parks, restaurants, and other amenities available in the area. Here we found that the new zoning code may have caused an increase in property crime in areas that approve fewer urban projects and are less friendly to pedestrians. However, we did not see any effects on violent crimes. To conclude, there are two main policy implications from our research. First, the evidence suggests that local officials can encourage zoning and construction permits without jeopardizing public safety, at least in the short term. Second, the idea of more eyes upon the street which we can define as neighborhoods being more walkable, attenuates the relationship between crime and urban development. Thank you very much.